It's absolutely stunning here. The sun rose not too long ago and, and it was the most extraordinary hues of pinks and orange right across uh, the land as far as the eye could see. And you touched there on uh, the opening Bungal ceremony yesterday and I was reflecting upon that thinking about how it was the late Yonopingu who said that the Bungal ground, the ceremonial ground of the universities for the Yongo people where culture is passed on, where knowledge, history and stories are shared and preserved and protected forevermore. And it made me think quite a lot about culture and about the creative arts and how we tell our stories. And so I'm really thrilled that uh, one of Australia's leading curators, artists, writers uh, and creative forces, Rhoda Roberts, joins us now. Annie Rhoda, thank you so much for your company. Oh, thanks for having me, Dan. Let's talk about the creative side of Gama and uh, the, the way that's used in preserving culture. How do you reflect upon that? Well, I really think you're absolutely right. It is the university, as the late Mr. Unipingu said, but it's also a great healing. It's a way of telling stories and bringing out that truth telling, whether it's in film, theater, dance, music. But I think we're on the lands where they use culture and art as a political tool when they presented the Bark Petitions to Canberra, which was about equity, our land, our knowledge, and who we were and are. And at the moment, you, we can't escape. We are having a national discussion about the outcome of the referendum. Do you see a role for Indigenous creatives uh, to be able to help tell that story and perhaps consider and map a path forward? Absolutely. I think after October the 14th, where there was great heartache, because people do want to have that perspective and tell about their life experiences and find solutions. So the arts can provide that. So we literally just went head down, let's continue what we do well, and that is telling the stories. That is telling the truth of what occurred, but doing it through film and drama and theatre. People then can sit back and just take it in, and they're not being preached at, and I think that's the really important thing. It's, it's a different kind of mirror, isn't it? It's not as blunt-edged as perhaps media discussions where people say make a comment and move on. The arts has a, a different way of facilitating conversation, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's even when you look at a bungal with the opening last night, and Kulta was, of course, a thematic with one of the dances of fire. So when we think of the NADOC theme this year, and we think of fire, it's not only the fire in the belly to make sure we have the next group of leadership, but it's also about the fire and how we maintain country and land management. So culture and arts brings everything to the, to the forefront. And I think if we just find more opportunities, particularly creatives across the nation, Olympics are coming up, yeah. where we can show the world, but also ourselves. You go and you see a great film, it sometimes shifts your perspective. If we can do it in the right way, people will shift their perspective and actually realize our art and culture is the oldest living form in the world. What a thing to own as a nation. And you touched on the fire in the belly. You are as busy as ever. What are the projects that are capturing you and, and why? Look, I think festivals are great. I do a number of festivals because they are gathering grounds where people get and to have those difficult conversations, the one-on-ones, the experience of weaving or whatever it is. But I'm about to go into rehearsals for a production called My Cousin Frank. My Cousin Frank, Roy Roberts, was the first Aboriginal signed to an Olympic team. Wow. And so it's about his life growing up it's in timely. a... Timely. Yeah, very timely. Very strategic. Yeah, very strategic <laughs> as creatives. But it's a story that for the region he came from, Lismore in northern New South Wales, will hopefully look at long-term maintenance of that story, but also we are home to the first Aboriginal Olympian. So I can just see the cultural tourism. Yeah, I can't wait to, to see that production. I wonder if it'll still be going when 2032 rolls around with the Brisbane Olympics. Uh -huh. There'll be lots to, to think about. Annie Rhoda, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you for having this, me this at morning. Rama.